hoo ha hoo ha Welcome to another splendiferous spore video. Evolution is an existential quest for power. All species have this in common, the desire to lust for blood. So today we're going to simulate just one such species in everyone's favorite intergalactic evolution simulator. I'm talking, of course, of a spore. I set out with this goal in mind as the species and named it, um, the Genocinoceros. Get it? It's a portmanteau of genocide and rhinoceros. To begin the quest to wipe out every other species in the universe and ascend the intergalactic throne in glory as master of the universe. So it all began 3,829,095,200 years ago, all in the primordial soup of the cell stage. Meet the Genocinoceros. At this stage of its development, even smaller than an amoeba. Our tale begins here with the early evolution of mean red eyes to show how angry we were at everyone and express malfeasance to anyone who should make the mistake of locking eyes with our prehistoric protagonist. The Genocinoceros evolved a horn on its face and mouths on the side of its face for attack utilizing the momentum from its flagellum to stab vegetarians early in its evolutionary history. This adaptation was so successful among its ancestors that we evolved yet even more horns for the side of our bellies, this time not for attack but for self-preservation, so that even if larger and fiercer predators attacked and attempted to devour us whole, they would perish from the pain of our spiky exteriors ripping up the inside of their mouths. This left the all but forgotten smooth-bellied Genocinoceros to the forgotten past among our ancestors. Naturally, this adaptation grew and proliferated, evolving more and more spikes all over the body of the Genocinoceros. Pointy, threatening, and dangerous, the Genocinoceros evolved one cyclops eye and lost its vestigial flagellum, only to be replaced by yet another threatening spike pointing directly out of its rear end for protection from surprise attacks from predators. It is now completely impossible to harm or even touch us at all. No matter how slow or un unwieldy we are, if we can get to you, we're going to eat you. Now completely surrounded by quills, the Genocinoceros has evolved into something stupidly overpowered and just honestly baffling to lookers on. How could anyone possibly approach, let alone digest, such a spiky organism? And, despite how long it takes us to get around the primordial soup, eventually we evolve a brain and legs to walk on, setting in motion the next set of events leading, of course, to the creature stage. Ah, the creature stage. 2,900,000,000 years after our ancestors' inception into the primordial soup, the Genocinoceros steps onto land and builds its nest on the sweltering shores of our young planet. Destined to make friends and enemies, but mostly enemies. Naturally, our quest for world domination begins by eating all the people who want to be our friends for DNA points. It all begins, of course, with the nice species like the crocus, the spittoon, and the tigre. All of which are honestly too pitiable to behold. We quickly extinct them by bashing our faces into them, unlocking with it enough DNA points to begin the transformation into s something more resembling a uh, rhinoceros than before. A goofy nose, two eyeballs again, and arms and legs to move around faster on land and charge into people. We extinct the Dubla, the Oogie, the Dukes, and of course, the species known only as Miss Butterfly, none of whom stood a chance against our sharper mandibles, bigger brains, and angrier, downward-pointed eyeballs to display our dominance against all other species than Genocinoceros. We devoured the flesh of the Moopid Staggies, the Modigals, and then, uh, 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 the game unfortunately crashed since, uh, the Steam version of Spore is, it's just a mess. So we just did it all over again, and honestly, I got pleasure out of it. The Jarka, the Dweebly, the Gnarl, and the Brish. None of them held a candle to our pointier horns, stompier feet, or the, the literal pizza cutters we evolved for years. We killed every species we met and appropriated their body parts. I'm just gonna say the names of the other species because I like the sound of them. The Hoosies, the Monkey Boys, the Kokimos, the Mothras. The Splurgs, the Doolibs, and of course the Granks. All this to summon the powers to hunt down a rogue Hayton. 
At which point, we claimed another hundred DNA points and took a victory lap to evolve wings and make ourselves look like some kind of nightmarish demonic elephant. I can name all the other species we knocked out, but I think you get the picture. We evolved arms over our other arms. And then the finishing touch, spiky butt cheeks to shoot people with poison. And so, with all that in mind, 3,820,000,000 years from our humble origins, we concluded the creature stage, which leads us, of course, to the tribal stage. Ah, the tribal stage. The Genocinoceros evolved the ability to use tools and communicate to form greater sentences, forming small packs of hunter-gatherers, but mostly hunters and not gatherers. We donned tribal masks to hide our facial expressions, grew mustaches, and pierced our noses with rings to strike fear into our enemies, to advertise to them how much pain we were capable of withstanding in combat. I made ample use of the baby duplication glitch to pad our numbers with extra warriors, and then it was off to conquer the pink tribe, the cyan tribe, and of course the green tribe none of whom stood a chance against us because we had carried over our ability to spit in people's faces at long distance as a ranged attack. Thus, before we even entered into combat, the sheer toxicity of our saliva would wound them mortally sometimes. At last, we appropriated spear technology to conquer the Orange Tribe and the Lavender Tribe, who also had thick, luscious rear ends but lacked the spiky, poisonous butt cheeks required to maintain dominance at the top of the food chain. Not only were we alpha, but we were also the most cultured donning feather headdresses and skulls on our head to display our kills to our enemies. Thus concluded the tribal stage at last, with no others left standing, and the utter destruction of every single other tribe on the face of the planet. What lay next would be the civil and ideological war among factions we know only as the civilization phase. Ah, the civilization phase. Bombs, tanks, nuclear war. These revolutionary ideas set in motion a Genocinoceros Enlightenment, an age of Aquarius. But for all their ideas, the Genocinoceros species splits in an ideological explosion. Some religious, some warlike, and some economical. It's all across the globe in a race for arms, influence, and power. Guns, industry, and productivity will conquer the day as we seize control of the central continent with our gun-mounted cars from the red, purple, and yellow countries unlocking Genocinoceros boats and spreading our imperial dominion to the sea and the lands that lay beyond. We break the Geneva Convention, using the gadget bomb to blow up the Blue Nation and plant our flag in their soil, reduced to only ash and rubble. We launched a few more gadget bombs, swarmed our opponents with planes, but this all took a while, so then I just ran out of patience and saved up 48,000 spore bucks to bomb the living daylights out of everyone in nuclear Armageddon with the iconic series of ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Barrages. The world now united, purged of defective factions unnatural to the Genocinoceros evolutionary chain. There can be only one alpha line. Thus, after 3,829,094,900 years, we entered into the sublime technological revolution of the space stage. So commenced the space stage, which is objectively the worst stage in Spore, most of which took place in bombing everyone else we met. But before we bombed them, we would offer them a trade route. If they accepted, we spared them for the little extra income they offered our empire. If they did not accept, we would relentlessly bomb them with larger and larger payloads until they capitulated. I hate the space stage so much. Every other species is ugly and has cringe dialogue. This was the only playthrough I've ever done where I was totally happy with my decision to bomb, nuke, and wipe out everyone else. They deserve death. But by this time, I'll, I'll admit though, I was getting a little bit bored with the Genocinoceros' violent tendencies. Oh look, a, another species, we'll just extinct them. How original. The problem is that there are just far too many species in the Spore universe to realistically complete the task of wiping them all out. It would take hundreds of hours, and we've got only a few minutes left in this video for the Deus Ex Machina ending. So naturally, our destructive tendencies came to match with the one and only empire most famed in Spore for being generally abrasive and disagreeable, the Grox. Here's where everything broke down. The Grox were more destructive even than we were. 
I really hate them, and I think it's just spam and unfair that they exist in the game and control the entire center of the galaxy where the gravitational pull worsens. If you sit in one of their systems even for a few seconds, they'll gang up on you and shoot you with little hope of escape or retaliation, after which you respawn all the way back at the edge of the universe and have to repeat the process all over again. If you should be lucky enough to conquer one of their outposts, it's only a short matter of time before they re-establish their colony and take back once again on the offensive. The only answer to their spam is even worse spam. So instead of confronting the Grox head-on, in the most ungenocinoceros fashion, I fled from every Grox conflict in my fully upgraded ship until finally, at last, I made it the center of the universe. I met Steve, the alien, and obtained the Staff of Life. Which, ironically, if you use the Staff of Life on a Grox-inhabited planet, it kills the Grox, but ultimately paves the way not to kill and destroy more species, but instantly terraforms the planet into a lush paradise, ushering in a cornucopia of new life into the universe. New plants, new species, and a breeding ground for yet even more of them. And in the end, ironically, that's the story of how we, of the Genocinoceros, the most violent species to ever inhabit and conquer the cosmos, indirectly became the most productive, peaceful, life-bringing force to ever inhabit the universe. What life would we breed in this newborn, peaceful galaxy? That all remains to future generations to decide. Anyway, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Big thanks to my patrons who subsist on a diet consisting of only primordial soup. Until next time.